All right, students, welcome to the first of two videos for uh, topic 4.5. I'm going to talk briefly about what are called standing waves, which you see in nature quite a bit. It's important that you guys understand them. And uh, really what standing waves are from an IB physics point of view is it's the interference of reflected waves with incident waves in a periodic fashion, okay? So if you remember uh, the superposition principle for waves, right? If I consider a transverse wave pulse, it's traveling through a rope down to one fixed end. What happens when it hits that fixed end is it, uh, is it becomes inverted, okay? Um, so you can see every time they're going from left to right, you see that this, this wave becomes inverted. Uh, if I send another incident pulse from the left-hand side, notice exactly what will happen when the inverted wave um, meets and occupies the same space and time as the next incoming pulse, then we have perfect destructive interference. And for that instant, then there's no wave at all, right? Which is, which is just the superposition principle for waves, okay? So to note, initially the wave has a positive or up amplitude before it's inverted or reflected. When it hits the wall, it bounces back, but now it has a negative amplitude. In other words, it's inverted. Okay, and one thing I really want you to notice is that the reflected wave is exactly out of phase with the original wave. Okay, and the phase difference is exactly pi. And I have also a note on here about how the other another wave pulse interferes with the reflected wave. It turns out that the wave that the way that um, that continuing wave pulses uh, interact with reflected waves gives rise to what's called the standing wave, which I'll show you in just a second here. Okay, so a series of periodic transverse wave pulses. Okay going from left to right. Note the pattern that emerges when all of these um, interact with the inverted reflective waves. Okay, We have these certain spaces where it looks like there's a standing wave, right? There's a wave that goes up and down that doesn't appear to be traveling at all, but in fact there's a lot of energy going through that medium. You see if the conditions are just right, you have what's called what, what sort of looks like a wave that goes up and down but doesn't really go anywhere and it turns out that if you um, that if you continue sending periodic transverse waves from left to right in such a way just right uh, such that they interfere just perfectly with the with the uh, ref, uh, reflected inverse waves you get what's called a standing wave okay so again if many waves travel down the rope in succession at a constant frequency in other words a wave train then the original and reflected waves will interfere according to the principle of superposition in a pre predictable fashion and again they appear to not be moving but of course they are just through one another and these are called standing waves okay all right now the nature of the interference depends Depends upon the frequency of the waves and the amplitude obviously needs to be the same in order for periodic constructive and destructive interference to occur so if you take a snapshot in time okay in the case of you have a distance L say a, a slinky or a string if you have half a wavelength a snapshot in time might look like this okay all right at various time intervals it might look like this if you have a complete wavelength on a string of length L it might look like this okay so you see this depiction of standing waves uh, in physics textbooks quite a bit. Kind of looks like, you know, two flat sort of rugby balls or footballs, American footballs or something like that, okay? So your definition of a standing wave is formally a wave that transfers no momentum or energy but has consistent points of maximum and minimum displacement. And it's formed when two waves with the same amplitude, velocity, and um, wavelength, and hence frequency, they meet head on, okay? Now, it's not to say that there's no energy traveling through the medium. As we know, there's lots of energy, but it doesn't transfer energy from one place to another. Basically, in the case of the beads, they just go up and down, okay? Now, for waves of equal amplitude traveling in opposite directions, another way of saying that is that there is on average no net propagation of energy things are just going up and down up and down up and down okay all right now waves can interfere on a string and they can do so uh, under one of two conditions number one after reflecting from one end and number two while being gener generated on opposite ends okay the more the more common uh, situation that we will deal with especially when we play with slinkies in the classroom will be number one reflecting from one end okay all right so here's a really good simulation of two waves i have a green wave and a red wave uh, and the blue wave shows how they interact and you can see 
that by the superposition principle, you add up uh, you know, the positives and the negatives, so forth, in terms of amplitude, and you end up with this blue, blue wave, which goes up and down and up and down and up and down in a regular periodic fashion. That's a classic standing wave. Now, whatever the mechanism, when, they, when traveling waves exist in the same space and the same time, they always interfere and create, can create standing waves. So here's a slinky. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is an experimental uh, water pool here. Right, so you can see that it appears as though the waves go just go up and down, up and down. There's a lot of energy going back and forth, and it's because the incident water waves are interacting with the reflected water waves, which are inverted. And the net result, if things are timed just right, is you get this really cool sort of weird-looking oscillation where the waves don't really seem to move very much. Okay, all right. So the same simulation here. I want to introduce to you the concept of nodes and anti-nodes. Okay, if you notice, there are certain parts of the resulting blue wave that have no vertical display whatsoever they don't they appear to not move okay these are called nodes and these are again points of the medium that stay stationary at all times okay in contrast exactly in between the nodes you have um, these areas of maximum displacement and they correspond to the peaks and troughs these are called anti nodes okay so again points of, of the medium that have the maximum displacement all points on the wave have different amplitudes okay the maximum amplitude would be 2a at the anti-nodes, uh, assuming that a is the amplitude of the original green and, and red waves, uh, and to 0 at the nodes, right? So there's any sort of, um, any sort of range from 0 to 2a. And all points oscillate with the same frequency, obviously. The wavelength is 2 times the distance from one node or anti-node to the other. Or in other words, the distance between consecutive nodes or anti-nodes is lambda over 2, okay? And all points between one node and the next are obviously moving in phase, okay? Or else there wouldn't be such, um, such interference to make a standing wave, okay? Again, energy is not transmitted by the wave, but the wave has energy. There's lots of energy in that medium, but it's not being transmitted by the wave in the... Um, in the in the in the velocity of the wave because the velocity of the wave is actually zero. Okay, okay. So if you note the movement of the medium between nodes and anti-nodes, again here's a depiction of um, of a couple of different standing waves. Okay, in this particular case, when you have half a wavelength, what that means is that the wavelength is actually two times l, where l is the length of the of the string or the rope. Okay, and we're going to call this frequency the fundamental frequency or f1. Okay. Now, the next case, if you have sort of two segments here, okay, you have exactly one wavelength, so lambda equals L, okay? You notice that you have three nodes and two, three nodes, one, two, three, and then you have um, two anti-nodes, and let me label that, okay? Here's a node, one, two, three, those are my three nodes, and then two anti-nodes here and here. In the previous case, you had two nodes here, and here, and then you have one anti-node, okay? In the ne next case, if you add another half a wavelength to that length L, you have four nodes and three anti-nodes, and notice that um, that the length is actually three halves of a, of a, of a wavelength, right? Because there's one and a half wavelengths, or in other words, lambda is two-thirds L, okay? Um, in this case, notice that the frequency is now three times what it was originally, or three times the fundamental frequency. In this case, F2 was two times. So every time that you add like a segment or half a wavelength, it appears as though you are actually doubling the frequency. And in fact, that's, what's, that's what happens in standing waves. In general, the allowed wavelengths along a length of string or medium L is um, 2L over N, where N is any non-zero positive integer, okay? All right? Now, you can also express the frequencies using the wave equation as F1, which is the fundamental frequency. That's V over 2L, where V is the speed of the wave in, through that medium or rope of length L. F2 would be V over L, F2 equals 2, F1, and so forth, okay? Now, a couple of terms that you guys need to be aware of in IB physics, okay? When N equals 1, it's F sub 1, it's called the it's called the fundamental mode, fundamental uh, or, or first harmonic or fundamental frequency. And this is the very lowest frequency that you can get. So you can imagine going up and down, up and down, up and down. In this case, the frequency is, is much, much lower than it would be going up and down, up and down over here, where you have four nodes and three anti-nodes. With n equals two, Okay, this is called the second harmonic. Uh, and if you're a musician, uh, you probably know these terms, harmonics. Um, 
and I'll try to demonstrate some of this to you in class with a guitar. It turns out that I play guitar and I'm quite familiar with harmonics and so forth, okay? When n equals 3, f3 equals 3 times f1, that's called the third harmonic, uh, etc. Okay, so again, n equals 1, 2, and 3. These are non-zero uh, positive integers, okay? Now, uh, oh, sorry, again, now f1 is also called the fundamental frequency, which is a term that you'll need to know in the IB. Okay? And notice that simply all other, um, all other harmonics above that are just integ integer multiples of F1. Okay? So again, here's a depiction from your, from your textbook. Okay? Again, summing up N1, 2, 3, and 4. There's obviously a lot more than that, but this is showing um, the fundamental frequency, second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic. Okay? All right? Now, this is a really nice little demonstration where we can look at different, um, different allowed wavelengths on a string of length L. So again, L in every case is going to be the distance between the two points left and right. Okay? For n equals 1, you have two nodes and one antinode. This is the fundamental frequency. Okay? And these are the equations that govern the fundamental frequency. Just remember that a half a wavelength fits on the length L. Um, when you have n equals 1. For n equals 2, you have an entire wavelength that's going up and down. Notice that you have uh, um, three nodes. There's a node here and there's a node in the middle, which is actually not um, shown by a dot, but it's somewhere right in here, okay? For the next case, n equals 3, you're visualizing what's being shown over here, okay? n equals 4, it's five nodes and four anti-nodes. n equals 5, and finally n equals 6. And this is a really great little illustration because it shows you um, how much faster or how much greater the frequency is for the higher nodes, the higher ends than the lower ends, right? This is a C, very low frequency, up and down, kind of a sleepy up and down, like you're almost like on a hammock or something going back and forth. Whereas when you get all the way up to n equals 6, this is, this is in comparison sort of a crazy high frequency, okay? And again, uh, F6 is exactly 6 times F1, right? Or in other words, it's 6V over 2L or 3V over L, okay? Okay, now I'm going to show you guys uh, a wave string generator. And wave string gen generator is pretty cool, okay? You have this um, sort of vibrating machine over here, uh, which is connected to a clamp, um, and there's a very tight string. And this goes up at a certain known frequency. And it turns out that if, you, um, if in the time for a wave to travel along the cord and back again from the fixed clamp, a second wave is sent, then the second wave will obviously reinforce the first one if it's timed just right. Now this occurs if the generator produces exactly two, three, or any n number, integer n number of waves during the time it takes to make a round trip return journey. So here, is, here are your pictures again. You have the fundamental or first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, etc. And this is kind of what it looks like um, in real life, okay? So this is this, this would be the second harmonic here because you have one complete wavelength on the, um, on the length of the string right there, okay? So constructive interference of many waves results as a standing wave. Each standing wave pattern is produced, produced at a unique frequency, which are called har harmonics. And another way to think about this integer counter n if you ever get confused about it, is n is simply the number of loops or sort of segments in each pattern, okay? All right, I just want to talk, take a slight tangent here um, about stringed instruments and playing, and playing the um, guitar. And what I'm going to teach you here is not explicitly covered uh, in the IB, but I'm just showing how, I, I just want to show you, um, because I'm a guitar player, and I think it's quite interesting how tension and uh, velocity and harmonics and all this kind of stuff is related, okay? Again, you will not be asked questions uh, like this on the IB, okay? So it turns out that um, the speed of a wave on a medium, such as a string, is uh, proportional to the square root of the tension. And remember, tension is a force, okay? This term mu on the bottom is the mass per unit length. You can also think of, think of it as like a mass density per unit length, okay? All right? Since f equals uh, v over lambda, the higher tension gives a greater frequency, which you know if you play any stringed instrument, okay? Each string is the same length on a guitar from the headstock down to the bridge right here, right? You wouldn't have a guitar with different um, length of strings, okay? But they're different diameters. And this is the reason why guitar strings, for example, have, have a, a great variation in thicknesses from the low E up to the high E, okay? So that is inherent in different mass per unit lengths, okay? So the waves in the thicker strings are slower because V equals F lambda, and those will be lower frequencies. So shorter strings play higher notes since the lambda, since the wavelength is less. So in order to play different notes, what you actually do when you press down on a fret is you actually shorten the length of the string. 
Uh, it's pretty cool, right? Um, and so playing harmonics, which I'll show you guys this in class, you would place a finger on the node of a harmonic, the middle of the second harmonic, and I'll show you guys how to do that, okay? So a little bit more about playing guitar. Um, turns out that a plucked string actually vibrates at many frequencies. The ones that create standing waves are the ones with the nodes at the ends, okay? So this particular string vibrates at 100, 200, and 300 hertz, for example, 400, all right? But the largest amplitude, which is the first harmonic, um, that's the first harmonic, so this is the pitch that we actually hear. Even though all the other uh, pitches and frequencies are also there, we don't actually, our ears can't detect all of them. We can only detect this one, the biggest one, okay? Now, electromagnetic induction, which we'll study later, is involved in what it does is it picks up the sound through what's called a pickup. So electric guitars have these things called pickups, and if you've ever noticed, you ever played one, they have very strong magnets in them, uh, and we'll talk about that later, okay? So just an example of a problem. Um, dealing with with tension and so forth and uh, velocity the velocity of the wave in this case is proportional to the square root of the tension okay and the frequency of the first harmonic given that given 183 meters per second you would be able to find the frequency of the first harmonic as 144 hertz now again you're not really going to be asked any questions with v equals root t over mu however you might be given qualitative questions such as how are v and t related what's the sort of relationship and you will definitely be given questions where you'll be given uh, the velocity of a wave through a particular medium such as a string and you'll be asked to find the first harmonic second harmonic and so forth that would be fair game for you guys all right and we'll do more questions um, like those later okay all right last slide i just want to let you know um, that standing waves can also be produced in three dimensions and they're by no means restricted to two dimensions okay you don't need to know these but they're really cool so we have a couple of cases here where for example here if we consider the length l which is the diameter of this sort of circular wave n equals one you have two nodes one anti-node and the conditions are the same for the fundamental frequency as they were for a wave sent on a string in this case n equals two so you see you have one complete wave on this particular length of L, okay? And a cool application of this is um, sound waves, they're longitudinal, but sound waves also produce standing waves. And we're gonna talk about that in the next video when we talk about the sound, um, sound waves, um, standing waves and pipes. You can do all kinds of cool things. This is like a big pile of small styrofoam balls. Um, and then sound is coming in from different uh, different angles. And, a, and, and they are constructed such that a perfect sort of standing wave can actually, that energy can actually elevate some of these um, styrofoam masses in a particular pattern like that. So really, really cool stuff, all right? And one more example. Let's do this example. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one. Okay, so a standing wave is set up on a string with both ends fixed. The frequency, so like a guitar, the frequency of the first harmonic is 150 hertz. Calculate the length of the string. Well, a very easy application of the wave equation. The, the wavelength is 1.6. Um, the wavelength is 1.6 meters. Okay. For the first harmonic, uh, the fundamental frequency L would be. Uh, lambda over 2, which is 0.8 meters, okay? Now, for part B, the wavelength of the sound produced, uh, the speed of the way up, you know what? I guess you are actually meant to have this information in order to do part A. I was thinking about where's that velocity coming from? That's actually given in part B. That should be given in the main part of the um, question. All right, the wavelength of the sound produced, well, the sound has the same frequency as the, as the standing wave, and that ends up being um, 2.3 meters for the wavelength, and the frequency of the third harmonic, okay, again using three times the fundamental, you end up with 450 hertz. Now, you could also note simply, um, in addition to being an integer multiple of three of the fundamental frequency, you could actually plug in your values, which is what I did at first, uh, which is 3V over 2L to get to 450. Either way, the second way is much easier, it's more straightforward, but you get the same answer either way.